गुड मॉर्निंग यस दिस मॉर्निंग आर टू शेयर मैसेज फ्रॉम द बुक ऑफ मार्क चैप्टर फोर्टीन मार्क चैप्टर फोर्टीन I shall read verse fifty-one to fifty-two. Mark chapter fourteen, verse fifty-one to fifty-two. The Bible reads: Now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. and the young the young man laid hold of him and he left the linen clothes and fled from them naked amen yes uh, today we want to meditate more about the life of Jesus when you went to pray in the garden of gethsemane in relation to our life of walking with Jesus so we are going to look at this passage that is talking about a young man that followed Jesus with nothing but only a linen cloth around his body and when this young man was seized by the group of the people the bible says that he left the linen cloth behind and he ran away naked he was fleeing away from the people that were trying to seize him people that were trying to catch him so he thought i don't need to keep hold of this cloth if i keep hold of it maybe people will end up catching me so i will leave it behind so this passage is talking about the author and the writer of the book of mark mark himself he wrote his own story he wrote his own story mark was the person who was the same man, disciple that was honing the room where the jesus and the disciples had their last supper the upper room where jesus and the disciples had their last supper was hot by Mark himself as well so unlike the rest of the disciples that most of them were probably low class they were people that were never heard of they were people that were powerless and poor for Mark he was not that much to that lower level or he was not that very poor at least he was one of them that had a little bit of power and money and he took the responsibility of taking care of most of the need of the disciples when it comes so during the last supper Jesus sent the disciples to go and have prepare the last meal and it was to be eaten together as one family in the upper room that was owned by apostle or disciple Mark so as we saw in most of the meditation when we started looking at the way of the cross we could see that as at the last supper when the last supper was being held at the house or at the home of Mark time came and Judas Iscariot had to leave the rest of the disciples behind when Judas left and he went out to save Jesus at that time Jesus told the rest of the disciples that let us go out to get some money let us go to the mountain of olives so Jesus took the disciples and he went out there with them to pray to prepare for what is 
to cut his way, to prepare for the cross. So as they went to the mountain, Mark probably was asleep at his home. So Mark probably did not go with the rest of the disciples. When Judas left, there were only 10, I mean 11 of the disciples left. So Jesus told them, let us go and pray. Let us go to get some money. Let's go to the mountain and, let's, and we pray. So as Jesus told the disciples, probably Mark must have stayed behind at his, at his home and he, he was sleeping. So while he was sleeping, when Judas had left to sell Jesus, he had left the disciples at home. So as he left them at home, maybe he thought that they were still at home. So probably Judas and the rest of the priests, chief priests and the soldiers must have come to the house of Mark once again because they were expecting to find Jesus there. They were expecting to find him and the disciples there. But when they came, they found that they had left. Probably maybe only Mark was at home. So Mark would have responded to their call. So as Mark responded to their call, the soldiers and Judas could not find Jesus there. So Judas being one of the disciples for a long time, he must have known where Jesus have gone that night with the rest of the disciples. So since he could not find Jesus and the disciples there, his next stop must have been the Garden of Gethsemane to the mountain where Jesus normally prays. So they had to live there. But as they were living, Mark must have been left with a lot of fear in his heart. He was, must have been left with a lot of fear. What would happen next? These people have come here to look for Jesus. They are seeking for Jesus. What can I do? What is happening? But as Mark was in that position, we can also believe and we can also think that Mark would have thought of going back to sleep, thinking that this is Jesus. He always takes care of himself. No one can have power and authority over him. So Mark might have thought, that, let me go back and sleep. Because Jesus has the ability to defend himself. After all, he is also having the rest of the disciples. He has 10 more people with him. So it doesn't matter whether I go or not. He can, they can take care of him and he can take care of them as well. Maybe in his heart, he might have also thought that I don't care about the Lord. I don't care where the Lord might go or know what will happen to him. Because he can take care of himself. It's very possible. It's very possible that we too, like Mark and Judas, who thought that even if I sell Jesus, maybe he can still take care of himself. He can defend himself. So we can also as well have this kind of attitude in our heart as well. We can think that the Lord is strong. The Lord is almighty. Everything that comes to him, he can defend himself, he can take care of himself, so he doesn't really need us. So Mark was one of the disciples that had learned, he has really learned a lot, the word of God so deeply from the Lord. He has been with the Lord for a long time, so he had learned a lot of things from him, and he had received deep love from the Lord. So because of that, there must be 
a heart of appreciation and a heart of acknowledgement about Jesus in his heart, about the love of the Lord in his heart. However much he was thinking that the Lord can defend himself, but because of the love and the, because of the care and the deep teachings of the Lord that he had received, he had some connection, he had some attachment and care of the Lord in his heart. So as Mark was thinking about this, thinking of going back to sleep, there was a part of him that was telling him a different story. There was a part of him that was trying to ask him to be suspicious of what would happen next to Jesus. So as Mark had seen a flood of soldiers looking and seeking for Jesus, Mark would have thought and must have felt very uncomfortable in his heart. If I don't want the Lord, what will happen to him? If I fail to go and do something, and something wrong happens to him, how will I live with my life? How can I be able to live with myself? Because I have not, I have known him. He's a loving person, he's a caring man, and now the soldiers are looking for him. What will happen? How will I feel if something happens to him? He must have felt so bad in his heart, pain in his heart. I remember when we were young, in Uganda there was a type of, in Uganda, the government of Uganda could apply of a kind of tax where every young adult, if you reach 18 years, there is a specific kind of tax that you're supposed to pay every year. A male adult you're supposed to pay. So at that time we were still young. I was really uh, maybe seven to ten. I can't remember the age well. But one day, I think our dad had not paid the tax in time. So when you don't pay, the government would send the police to come and arrest you and take you to jail for some time until you find money to clear that tax. So it seems our dad was informed that the policemen were coming to arrest him. So as the policemen were coming to arrest him, he went and hid in the bush, in the nearby bush that was close to the house. So when the police arrived, they asked with a lot of force, where is your dad? We told them that the police was not, I mean that our dad is not at home. Our dad said, don't tell them that I've gone to the bush there to hide. So when they were looking, they forced the policemen, forced themselves inside the house. But one of the children that was at home was very young. One of our brother was still very young. Then he shouted and said, Dad said we should not tell you that he has gone to hide in that bush. So as one of our elder brother had this, he started running so fast to go and warn our dad that we already know where you are. So when I was reading through, I remember that time. My elder, our elder brotherhood feel that the pain that we have betrayed our own dad and yet he had said, do not, do not tell them where I was. This young, our young brother thought he was defending our dad by saying, he said, you should not say like the other side. So we really felt bad that our dad's whereabout was known by the police, so they could arrest him. But somehow, I don't know whether it was good enough, our brother reached fast to where he was hiding, so I don't know what happened from there. But the next day, he could find money to go and clear with the tax. So I could imagine the kind of guilt that was in the heart of Mark, knowing that 
The soldiers are going to rest to arrest Jesus. They are really looking for him. However much Jesus was able to defend himself or to take care of himself, the numbers of the soldiers that were looking for him was must have been really scary to the heart of Mark. So he felt that he needed to do something. So as Mark was thinking about that, Mark must have left his house. To save time, he must have just taken the linen cloth and covered himself. So he started to follow Jesus. He started to go running as fast as he can so that he can reach before the soldiers and warn Jesus about the people that were coming, about what was to come to him. So as Mark was running, as Mark was trying with his level best, quickly getting out of his bed because he had no time to put on his clothes. So he covered himself with a linen cloth and he ran. Mark was a coward because as Jesus said, let us go to the garden of, garden of Gethsemane. Let us go and pray. Mark remained behind to see it. But this coward who might must have thought in his heart that the Lord can take care of himself. This coward gathered some strength. He became courageous again. He became courageous. So he thought, I need to go. I need to do some, at least I need to do something to defend my Lord, to defend my teacher. So Mark must have run so quickly speaking and saying in his heart that I must save the Lord. It doesn't matter what, I need to do something to warn him. There must be a lot of tension in the heart of man with that, in, with that desire of wanting to reach out to Jesus first. But it seems the soldiers were the first to reach when we look at the book of John chapter 18, it teaches us, it tells us about the soldiers, how they carried the torches and the weapons to arrest Jesus. So they must have escorted Jesus away after arresting him in a very intimidating way. Torches lighting everywhere, weapons. They came to arrest Jesus like a criminal. They considered him a criminal. They considered him a sinner. That is, they had to come with him with a lot of weapons, trying to intimidate people around him, trying to intimidate Jesus. So, because of that situation, because of that status, Mark was not able to warn Jesus. So because of the intimidating environment, it, made it must have made it very clear that it was not able, Mark was not able to rest, I mean to, to want Jesus, to reach out to Jesus and to want him. So because he was not able to reach Jesus and want him, Mark started following after them slowly. He started following after them slowly to see what would happen to him. To go with the Lord. Like Peter at the beginning where Peter said, Lord, I will walk with you everywhere. I will stay with you regardless of what happened. And as Peter said that, the rest of the disciples, including Mark, they also said, we are also going to be with you. Even at the last hand of it, we shall stay with you. So here we could see that it was impossible for Mark to reach to Jesus. And so because of the intimidating situation, the intimidating environment, Mark did not dare to try to be a brave person to try to save Jesus. 
But instead, he just continued to follow me from behind secretary. It was a situation where man could either abandon the Lord and run away or try to serve the Lord. He could have used his own force or skills or any other ability to try to serve the Lord or he could just run away because there was nothing he could do. He was one man against many soldiers. So as Mark was in that position, helpless, and nothing that he could do, there must be a lot of pain in the heart of Mark. Why could we tie around faster? Why we tie rich here first to want the Lord? Now they have taken him. They have seized him. They have come against him with a lot of weapons. I can see him, but there is nothing that I can do to save him. Being in that position where you are hopeless, it causes a lot of pain. But as Mark was following Jesus cautiously, in the hand, people were able to see Mark following them. So as the soldiers could see Mark continuously following them, they must have come, become suspicious. Then they start asking among themselves, who is this man following us? Who is this person that is walking with us? We need to find out. So in that manner, they could seize Mark. They could try to catch him so that they can inquire why, they, why this man, why this man is following them. So as they tried to arrest Mark, Mark could not withstand anymore. Mark took off and he started to run. But it seems that as he was trying to run, they could keep hold of his linen cloth. And as they could touch that, the clothes of Mark, he thought that, I can't hold on to this cloth anymore. If I keep hold of it, then I will be seized. I will be captured. I will be arrested. So the only option that Mark had to do was to leave behind the linen cloth and run naked. Mark never cared about his nakedness. He was concerned about saving his own life. So Mark had to run. He ran naked. So the courageous Mark who took he took the heart to leave his home in the middle of the night to come and warn the Lord. Became a coward again. He became a coward again. Because of that, Mark must have prayed over and over again so many times. There must have been a lot of regret and a lot of pain in the heart of Mark. Because at the beginning, before he could go there, Mark would have said in his heart that I will never be changed no matter what kind of situation comes. I will carry the cross together with the Lord. I will lay down my life for you. But in the end, like any other disciples, you could see Mark running away. In, for him, his was much more shameful because he ran out naked, he ran away naked. He left his clothes behind. It was really shameful and must have been really painful in the heart of Mark. Must have really been painful in his heart. How could I be this person? After what the Lord has done for me, after the great things that I've seen the Lord do in my life and in the life of many people, after receiving these great teachings from the Lord, and yet again, this is what I can do. This is what the only thing that I can do to run away naked and leave him.
This is a very painful moment. It must be a very painful moment for Mark. In the book of John, chapter 21, John records a scene where the disciples were stripped for work. But as they had done that, they put on, they put on the outer garment when they met the resurrected Jesus. John chapter 21 verse 7. It says, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 21 verse 7 that the disciples, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved thereof was said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work and throw himself into the sea. Amen. Yes, this is deeply related to the image of man who ran away naked. Man ran away naked. He stripped off his outer garment. He stripped off the linen clothes. The disciples when Jesus was crucified, however much Jesus had told them before that they should wait for him, after three days he will rise again. The disciples forgot the teachings of Jesus. But they had to go, they, they went out, they stripped off their garments and they just started doing their own thing. They started fishing. They started following the way of the world. Like the disciples, even if we have heard the word of God, we can easily strip off our outer garment. We can easily forget the teachings and the way that the Lord Jesus really wants us to be. And as we strip off our outer garment, we can go and we start following the ways of the world as well. We can easily do that because we are so much concerned about our own life, about our flesh, about satisfying the desires of the flesh. Mark wanted to save his own life, that he had to let go of the outer garment to save his own life. And yet Jesus said, if we try to save our own life, we shall lose it in the hand. But whoever loses his life, shall gain. So like these disciples, we can easily lose our way and we lose focus. I hope it doesn't matter how much we have learned and we have listened to the word of God. These people had been with the Lord for three years, but still, because of the, the desire to satisfy their own needs, they could let go of their outer garment. They could let go what would protect them. The word of God is there to preserve and to protect us. But when we listen to the word of God and situations in the world come knocking at the door, we should not be the people that let go the word of God. We should be the people that hold on to the word of God. So Mark recorded about this story. The story about the young man who ran away. This was recorded only in the book of Mark. Mark recorded this most shameful moment in his own gospel. It was a very shameful moment. When I was reading the first time the passage, I started asking myself, how can you write about someone running away naked in the scripture? I had no knowledge that Mark was really recording his own story. So I was really concerned, how can, you, how can this be recorded in the scripture? But Mark recording his own story, a shameful moment is in, in his own gospel, without concealing it, it speaks a lot. It was the gospel that Mark wrote himself. And yet, Mark recorded this moment of his life 
without hiding anything. So we can really learn something really great from this story of Mark. According to human nature, we always, we always and we usually try to cover up our own mistakes. We try to hide it, we try to make it, we, we try to conceal, seal it so that people cannot know. But Mark was open about his failings and he did not hide them. So today we are able to see the world of Mark's amazing faith through the record of his shame. However, Mark, however much Mark was shameful, but in the end, Mark's faith was restored. The act of abandoning the Lord and running away, this was like the deepest valley in Mark's life. But Mark revealed this. By revealing his shameful past, Mark wanted to testify the Lord who changed me and gave amazing love to me. This was the heart of Mark. He wanted to testify the great love, the deep heart of love for the Lord Jesus Christ. That however much I was shameful of him, however much I rejected and I left him behind to suffer, but the Lord still loved me. He never lived, he never left me. He showed much amazing and deep love for me. We need to be the people that remember this. If the valley is deep and the mountain is high, the deeper the valley is high, the more amazing mountain can be seen. So Mark wanted to reveal the Lord who was like a high mountain through his valley of life. The, Lord's, the love of the Lord was like a very high beautiful mountain in the valley of the life of Mark. The Lord still loved him in that very shameful moment, in that moment that he rejected the Lord. So we need to ask ourselves this question, how are we? Are we strong enough to stand and really defend the Lord? The truth is that we are very weak, we are shabby, and we are cowards and we are very hardly in our heart. This is how we are in front of the Lord. Weak, shabby, cowards, and very hardly people because of the sin in our life. But the question is, are we able to admit that we are shabby, that we are weak, that we are ugly and we are cowards that run away that we are hardly because of the sin in our life before the Lord? Are we able to admit this like Mark was able to admit and write his shameful life in the Gospel, in the record of the good things that people will read? Mark never thought that of all the good things he had done, the only thing that people will remember him with is that in the end, he ran away from the presence of the soldiers naked. People tend to always remember only the bad side of us. It doesn't matter what, how much good you have done. But Mark never thought about this. He became proud of that moment in his life. He accepted and he acknowledged his very own weakness, his cowardice, his hardliness, and his weakness before the world. He said, I was weak. I was this coward who ran away and left the presence of the Lord unprotected. I left naked. In our life of faith, we always try so hard to, be, to appear so great to people. We always try to be so great and we try to boast about our good qualities and our achievements. If we do so, if we be the kind of people that do such, 
then we are very far away from the viewpoint of the gospel. We are very far away from the kind of people that God would want us to be. In this story of Mark, in this story, we can ask also, what is the greatness of Mark? We must know this, that Mark wanted to testify about the Lord who talked and loved the disciples to the end, even though they were so miserable and undesirable. Mark and the rest of the disciples, they were weak. They were very miserable and they were the people that could leave the presence of the Lord anytime anything happens. But the Lord still loved them. So Mark really wanted to confess that Lord, we didn't even give a single word of comfort to you when you were walking towards the rugged path of the cross, the path of death. You walked that path without receiving even a single word of comfort from us. This was what Mark was trying to confess their weakness, the weakness of the disciples, their hand-caring heart, their hand-loving heart. So it was trying to confess by recording this shameful point or this shameful moment of his life in the scripture so that we can know and realize that we are weak, we need to accept that, we are cowards and we are very ugly. We need to be the people that admit that and we bring our weaknesses and kind of our ugliness, our cowardness before the Lord. And when we confess, like Mark and the rest of the disciples, that in the end return to the risen Christ, to the risen Christ, the risen Lord, then we can really receive and be reinstated as they were. Mark wanted to reveal the great love of Christ through revealing his own shame. Although his own shame, weakness, and cowardice was revealed, Mark wanted to testify the amazing courage inside of the Lord who carried the cross until the end. He really wanted to testify the path of the cross that Jesus took without any hesitation in the middle of tears, cries and distress. But he stood up. He must have said, Mark, fleeing the sea. But still, the Lord loved him. He must have recognized Simon Peter, denying him three times. But the Lord still loved him, and he loved him to the end. We can learn this heart of love from the Lord, but we can also learn to be the people that accept and recognize our weaknesses. And we carry these weaknesses and we bring to the Lord. And we can ask Him to give us the strength and the courage to overcome our weaknesses so that we can, as He has loved the disciples to the end of His life, we can also be able to grow and learn to love to the very end as our Lord has love. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, how shameful and how weak we are. Many times you have showed us great love. You have showed us care. But Father, we are so weak that we rely so much on our on the flesh. We care about the flesh more than we care about our spirit. We are people that are very shameful in many ways. We sin, we turn against you. We fail to love with the heart of true love that you have desired us to have. 
in this season and in this time of Lent, Lord, we have been meditating the beautiful and the, the kind of heart that you have. As your word says, that even in the middle of pain, even in the darkest hour of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, he still loved the disciples to the very end of his life. Today we have seen and we have meditated about the experience of Mark that he was able to flee and run away from the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ naked so that he could save his own life but in turn in the hand Mark would think and meditate upon his actions and he came out with boldness to testify of his weakness and shame Father, we pray that, Lord, may we learn to be the people that have the kind of heart of man, that do not try to hide our weakness, that do not try to hide our mistakes, but rather we acknowledge our weaknesses and we come before you, so that through our weaknesses, your glory may be revealed in our life, your life of love may be revealed. Father, we pray the Lord, guide our hearts and teach us so that we can learn from Mark as well as we learn from the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ, the heart of love, so that in our weakness, through Jesus Christ, we can learn to love one another, so that through that love, your love may be revealed in this world, and the people that are lost in this world can see the kind of life that we are living living in love so that they can also turn from their wicked ways and they can come back to you. We thank you for praying in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Peace be blessed.